Hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life. We're always looking for advanced power station solutions for our fifth wheel. And that's exactly what we have found today. This is the new Opus Mega 2. This is over 2,000 watt hours of capacity, full of great features. What I really like about it is this 30 amp RV style connector. Now we can plug it directly into the side of our fifth wheel. Hi, it's Jerry. There are many times in mine and Jones RV travel that we need portable power for short periods of time. That can be something as simple as pulling over in a rest stop half an hour to an hour, making lunch, running the microwave, maybe running a coffee pot, those types of things, a fan, then we just need that solution, but we need a high power device for that microwave, a thing that takes a lot of power. Or there are those instances where we may be traveling, say from you know, campground A to campground B, and during that period of time, it might be 12, 14 hours, or we're gonna do an overnight stop in something like a harvest host. And in the process of doing that, we want to be able to run all of our AC appliances without a gasoline generator, especially nine months out of the year when we don't need air conditioning. And a portable power station is absolutely a perfect application for something like that. That's why we're excited about this new Mega 2 by Opus. This is our third Opus product that we've looked at. We looked at the 1100 and the 1800. Very pleased with those. They performed exceptionally well, but the new features on this mega product line is absolutely ideal for RV travelers for a number of reasons. Let's talk about that. 45 pounds, you know, substantially, substantially less than a gasoline generator without all the noise and having to feed it, right? But this is where it really becomes important for we RV travelers. 2,048 watt hour capacity, all self-contained within this 45 pounds. I, I find that amazing. But above and beyond that, it has a pure sine wave inverter, and that sine wave inverter is able to provide, you ready for this, 2,500 watts of continuous power with a 5,400 watt surge. What does that mean? Well, I can run just about everything in here, refrigerator, the, which has kicks, you know, when the compressor comes on, it generates a little bit more amperage. This will be able to handle it, that 1,800 watt a microwave, TV, coffee pots in the morning, all those types of things. Junk can even use that 1800 watt hair dryer in the mornings on a shower uh, when we're getting ready to, right before we get ready to head back out on the road. This will be able to handle all that. What I also like about it is it's LIFO4 batteries. Um, I really like the capacity that these have, the quick charging they have, and the safety. These have 3,000 500 life cycles of charging before they reach 80%. Think about that. You could charge it every single day for about 10 years before you ever got to single capacity. It's gonna be kind of hard to do, I think. The, the real reason that we're excited about this is two other features where I think this really stands out over many of your power stations. One is this 30 amp connection that I can hook directly to our fifth wheel. Now, if you've already got a 30 amp camper, it's a plug directly in. For me, I'll be using a 50 amp to 30 amp dog bone and plugging this in. We're gonna be testing that. I think it's gonna work great. But above and beyond that, there's a port here on the side where we can add additional batteries. They sell something called a B2. I looked at it on the website this morning. I think they're about $800. And you can stack 2,100 watt hour batteries that are designed specifically for the Mega 2. And you can expand this from 2,048 watt hours. You're ready for this. You can take it up to 10,240 watt hours. Wow, I found that amazing. So that even becomes more important that you can use it within your RV or you could use it in a prepping environment or you could use it for outages when you're not traveling at your home, keeping your refrigerators and freezers and those types of things going. Or if you're looking at something like a van conversion or a bus conversion, instead of piecing out everything with batteries and inverters and MPPT charge controllers, it's all self-contained in one unit plug and just go. And I find that just absolutely amazing for we RV travelers to find something in this price performance. They've really gone down in this price performance as well as all the features and the capabilities. 
tons of inputs, 15 different types of devices that can be plugged in at the same time. It's got a very easy to view screen here with all the um, percentage of capacity that's available, how many watts are being taken out, how many watts can be put in when you're charging it either from an AC connection or your solar panels. We'll be showing you that later. It's got a Bluetooth app that you can use. Fast charging, it can handle, you ready for this, up to 3,700 watts at one time. It's the first time I've seen that on a class of this size power station that it can handle that much. So it's got fast charging capability. It's really, really important. And then it has a UPS style of function. So this is how this is really, really helpful um, if you're using it, say, as a standby device in your home or even in your RV for that standpoint. You could have this plugged in and you can have from an AC connection and you could have devices plugged into the front. There is a switch over and if it loses power, from say your pedestal or your home connection where you have it plugged in, it'll take a second or two, clicks on the, the sine wave inverter, and then boom, it'll continue to power your AC devices. I, I really like that feature a lot. Um, and operating temperatures are what you would typically find in any controlled environment, 30 degrees Fahrenheit to 104. The thing that you have to remember is it does have LiFo4 batteries in it and you can't uh, charge those below 32 degrees. So that's something very, very important. And that goes true for any LIFO 4 that is out there. All right, this is a great device. Let's take a real close up view here for just a moment um, to show you some additional features and capabilities. And then we're going to head outside and start testing this. So let's start with the important AC outlets that we have here your 120 volt outlets. Now, your total usage out of all these at any one given time is 2,500 watts. So that is the maximum amount of wattage that all these combine that can be able to be able to use. Now, again, if you're using this on something, say a job site or something like that to run power tools, these are true 20 amp connections. You can see the little side plug here for a 20 amp connection. But what I'm most excited about is this 30 amp style connector that we can plug directly in. So this is a very, very beneficial. Here, let me go ahead and power this up and I'll show you what it looks like when we power up. So the first thing you see is this, you know, 100% capacity and to turn on the inverter, you take that and hold it. And now these are all active. Uh, you can turn that off and you see it go away. Then you have your DC outputs that you have here. This is an Anderson style DC. So if you had some type of a device, say, uh, maybe like a um, a refrigerator, a 12-volt refrigerator that you needed a little extra power, you could use that. But you've got these great um, USB-style connections. You've got four 18-watt uh, USB-A type connections, and then you've got these USB higher power connections, like if you had a... Um, you know, a laptop that's repowered off of the uh, the C's. These will operate at literally 100 watts. Then you also have your, what I call the car port style connection that you have here, the 12 volt cigarette lighter style. Um, and then you've got these, um, these plugs here as well that you can use. I think these are two point ones that you can have here. These can handle up to 10 amps and you can see you turn them on by just pressing that button right there. You turn these on by pressing that button right there. And uh, what I haven't talked about is the Bluetooth capability and I'll be showing you the Bluetooth but you turn on your Bluetooth by holding this button right here. So that's the outputs here from uh, just looking at 120 volts, your car style adapters and all your USBs uh, and then that very handy Anderson plug that you could use as well. Now looking at the various inputs, again, this is purely for input right here. This is your solar connection. I was talking about 12 to 150 volts and a massive amount of wattage that you could put inside of this. And then this is where you, if you're going to plug it into, say, a regular wall circuit in your home or something like this, this is where you plug in that 120 volt. You can do slow charge at 800 watts or you can do fast charge at 1600 watts and then if you were to overload the unit this is the built-in circuit breaker here that would pop out and you can reset it from that standpoint and then I mentioned the battery packs that you can add with this they provide their own unique port that you see here for the battery packs and you can daisy chain multiple battery packs together 2000 
100 watt hours apiece, and this is where those connections are made. You literally stack these units up at that point in time. So very self-contained, very, very nice, very, very easy to use. Well, before we go outside, I like to take an oscilloscope and uh, plug up to the front. I will also put this under load. I really want to see how clean the power is from the 120 volt. You don't want dirty power on many devices such as your computers or your phones or your tablets or those types of things that can cause problems. Uh, you try to plug in a TV and you have dirty AC power. Um, you'll have artifacts on your TV. We don't want to see that. So let's make sure that this pure sine wave inverter is clean and we'll get that oscilloscope hooked up and see what that looks like. Okay, I have the power turned on the unit right now and you can see the, uh, this is called a sine wave and you can see the, there's no clipping here on the top. It's nice and smooth and round and this is exactly what you want to see out of a pure sine wave inverter. Whether you're running a power station or any type of an inverter, you want to see those nice round tops. And the other thing that I'm really pleased with seeing here is that if you look at the lines, the lines are very straight, very clean, they're not jagged. Um, they absolutely look fantastic. So I, I'm very, very pleased with seeing how well they're performing. Now, I've got a, uh, you're going to hear this thing get noisy here in just a second. I have got a, a heat gun. I'm going to turn that on. Now you saw, I'll do that again. You're going to see the power come on. You might see a little spike. Now that only happened. I'm running here. I'm looking at the meter a little over 1700 watts. I know it's noisy. I apologize for that. But you're seeing there was absolutely no deviation at all. And I'm running 1700 watts at this stage. And, um, you know, it's just as clean as a whistle. I, I couldn't be any, any happier with seeing how well this is performing. Well, the oscilloscope showed that this pure sine wave inverter, in my view, is just absolutely perfect. The tops were very smooth. We didn't see any jagged lines. Very, very, very good power coming out of this. So where do we go from here? Well, let's start testing. I'm going to be testing. It's going to take a couple days. This is now currently at full power, and I'm going to take it outside. We'll hook it up. And then I am going to run it in what I call the harvest host mode. We'll just hook this up and see how long this unit will run with the TV running for six or eight hours, running our refrigerator. Um, just I have a cradle point um, cellular router that's located up here. Then anytime we turn the power on, it comes up immediately and gives us internet capability. So all those devices are going to be running and we'll just see how long they run until we take this down to say 10 to 5%, something like that. We'll do that. So that'll be day one. Day two, uh, we will take this and I'm going to find a good sunny day and put a couple hundred watts of portable solar panels outside and we'll hook this up. Uh, bring it up to maybe 30 to 40 percent somewhere thereabout and then turn all the devices back on again and just see if the solar coming into this can maintain the unit for a period of time and continue to operate the devices that we like to operate here in the fifth wheel so that'll be you know tvs and refrigerators and those types of things uh, now let me mention this about solar this time of year it is we're full-blown winter here in the southeast so we've got a poor angle of the sun and the clouds here recently have been very, very wispy. So I'm not going to have that bright, clear, sunny day where I'm going to be able to get, um, say, you know, top out our solar panels. So I'm going to expect our solar panels are going to probably run at probably about half capacity. But I still think from a practical application, that'll be a good way to be able to test this new Opus Mega 2. I'm really excited about this. And I think this is going to be a great addition to I Love RV Life. And uh, I think when you see what the results are going to be, you'll probably want one of these for your RV as well. So let's head outside and get started. This is the configuration that I would use for, you know, typically the way we'd power. Uh, this is inside our bay. It gives us a chance to lock it up. Uh, where I don't have to worry about it being outside and wandering. And then what I also like, I've got a little bit of space here where I can run the cable outside. 
and I'll be doing solar as well. I'll be running our solar in here and making our connection for that as well. And then you see here, I've just got this, since this is a 50 amp RV, I've got a dog bone here, a 30 amp dog bone that takes both of the two L1, L2 power legs, 50 amp power legs, combines those into 30 amps. So this is what we have so far. Uh, we're going to go turn a bunch of stuff on inside and see how this is going to perform. And uh, just a straight plug in right here. Uh, you power it up, hit the button here for your AC inverter. I'm only pulling 100 amps right now. I don't have much on inside. I think I got the TV on. And uh, we're going to go turn the fridge on. We're going to turn the uh, Wi-Fi, the Cradle Point Wi-Fi on and see how it goes. Let's uh, take a peek at the app and just compare the app to this uh, 100 watts that we see coming out. And it is, it matches the uh, display identically. You see uh, on the right hand side here, we're at 97%. Uh, this is where I played with it just a little bit. It's also showing the temperature here outside. I like that as well. You don't want to use this below 32 degrees. So uh, we only got 100 watts coming out of it and uh, no solar input. Solar input will be uh, later on after we run this down a bit. So let's go inside and see how this is going to perform. I'm back inside. I've got everything hooked up. Power is running. TV. I've got the TV on. Uh, we're running the TV here um, through the the Wi-Fi, and I've got a I've got a Roku soundbar. So what's the difference? Well, he changed his name. Wow. To... And that Roku soundbar is awesome. We love that. So that's so what we've got pulling power right now is that Roku soundbar. We've got the TV that's actually putting power, and I know that's not a lot. Uh, the big issue is this guy right here. Uh, I've just turned him, make sure he is on and running, so he's nice and cold, so I hear that as well. Now for the Roku to run, um, this is actually, I'm using IPTV, I'm not running off the outside antenna. Let's see if I can point out, right up, right up here, uh, I have a Cradle Point router, and that Cradle Point router um, is doing all of my uh, IPTV. Uh, so we have that running right now as well. So um, let's see what we're doing app-wise. So app-wise, we're only running 200 and 239, 241 watts, somewhere thereabouts. And you'll notice it says we have six hours remaining. So let's talk about that. We saw the device that only shows six hours of power remaining. That's, that's actually not true. And we're going to see that as time goes on. I've been doing this. It's 1030 in the morning. So we're going to let this run till late tonight. I'm not even going to come back in here for late. What's going to happen with the refrigerator? I, I lowered the temperature really low so I could at least get enough draw to see what the refrigerator would would, would pull from uh, the Opus. And uh, I'm going to adjust the temperature to what I normally run it at, which is 4 degrees in the freezer and 38 in the refrigerator. So I'll set it for that. And then what's going to happen, the refrigerator gets to temp and then it stops running for a while and then minutes many minutes later it turns back on cools it off so it cycles off and on off and on and off and on so that's going to you know draw power back and forth so we're going to let this run i don't know i'll come back in tonight sometime we'll let it run all day long this would be just like we're boondocking for the day or two now i'm hoping that we have a, some good sunny weather over the next couple of days it's talking about sun partly cloudy We'll go ahead and test that. That's real world. I mean, that's what we face. We don't always have sunny days. I'm going to hook a bunch of solar panels up. I'm going to draw this down, I don't know, 50, 40, 30 percent, somewhere thereabout. We're going to see what this does after 24 hours. I'll hook up those solar panels. We'll see how quickly the solar panels will recover. I think I've got 400 watts of solar panel, but again, I doubt I'll get 400 watts out of it. I'll be lucky if we can just at least maintain uh, the power drain compared to the power picked up from the sun. We'll see how that's going to work. Now, the saving grace will be the refrigerator. The refrigerator is not always going to pull whatever it's pulling, 150, 160, 175 watts, something like that. So that's going to be going up and down, up and down. So I think I will have some recovery as time goes on. All right, I'm going to leave everything running and uh, we'll see how this performs. I'll see you back, I don't know, eight or nine hours. Okay, we have been running We've been running eight and a half hours. Uh, TV's been going. It's actually still on. And uh, we've got the Roku soundbar that's still going. Refrigerator's been running off and on all day long. And then right up there, we have our uh, Cradle Point router. So internet running. It, roughly eight and a half hours, something like that. So let's, 
walk out and uh, grab the app here real quick and see what it looks like. All right, let's see where we're at. We've been running a little over eight hours, um, almost eight and a half hours now, and we're currently about 220 watts. So that's the refrigerator still running, TV, not very uh, power consuming, nor is the Roku sound bar, nor is the internet. Uh, that uh, Cradle Point router is doing a really good job. But we're down to about 8%. Again, this kind of flops back and forth. So eight and a half hours, is about all we're going to get out of this without any solar. All right, solar is the next test. Well, that's not bad. Again, this system is only 2,000, just a fraction over 2,000 watt hours. And uh, to be running this all day long, uh, all day, uh, is not a bad deal. Not a bad deal with no solar coming into it. So that's going to be the next test. So tomorrow, I think, I think we're supposed to have a sunny day. And I'll grab about 400 watts of solar. And we'll hook it up and see if we can uh, start charging this back up. We're down, you know, what was it, about 3% of capacity left over. That's not much. So we'll, um, we'll just go ahead and see what that solar will do. We'll let the solar run for maybe an hour or so is what my thoughts are. Kind of get some capacity built back into this. And then we'll just kind of crank everything back up and see if this will keep up with it. I'd like to get it to the point if I can, to where I can run some solar on this during the day. We can run all the devices that you see running here, uh, you know, and have that for Met Comfort, and then still have enough capacity left over that when the nighttime runs, you know, I'll have enough to be able to say, run a coffee pot the next day, uh, maybe, maybe something like um, a, um, a, a toaster, those types of things, so we can have some breakfast before we head out the next day. But that's not too bad. That's not too bad. I think it's done really well for 2,000 watt hours and to be going off and on, what, anywhere from 200 to 260, 280 watts, off and on, off and on all day long, and to be able to squeeze eight hours out of that's not too bad. Okay, solar test is next. I'll see you tomorrow. So let's take a quick look at the sky today. It's not too bad. It's not terrible. I've got a little wispy clouds in here, but I think I'm going to get some clear skies at least for most of the day here so we can give it a good you know, a good shot. There's there's the sun, so it's a little bit behind some clouds. So let's go over here and uh, take a look, and I'll show you how I've got the solar panels set up. I'm hooking up to some 200-watt uh, portables. These are 200-watt portable panels, just, uh, you know, a standard off-the-shelf. You can get these just about anywhere. They're not very, very expensive, and they work really good um, for, for portable panels. So you can see I'm getting really good sun on them right now. No shadowing. Pretty happy with that. And uh, let's walk over here and just see what the input looks like on the uh, Opus. Again, so I can just kind of button things up. You can see uh, how I've run the cable in. Again, I've got plelenty of room here to plug the uh, 30 amp cable into it. And then right here on the side, you can see where we plug the uh, solar panels in and they give you this adapter. Now the you know the gauge is a little thin for me. I wish this was a little beefier. But uh, we'll just take what we can get, what came with the kit. And uh, right now we're getting, uh, we'll just look at it from the front of the panel here. 227, this started at uh, 3%. It's probably been running 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes um, before I could get the camera operating. So about 227 watts coming in in this kind of wispy morning winter sun. Uh, that should, should get up a little bit more as the afternoon uh, continues. 9% is not enough for me to do the testing right now, so it's about 11 o'clock in the morning. Let's let this run for a couple hours and get some charge on it, and then uh, we'll do some things like some microwave testing and those types of things. But right now, uh, you can see I've got this plugged in. That's one of the things I like about this is uh, even when I do my testing, I'm going to leave the solar panel going on it. Um, this has got what they call a pass-through capability, so we can charge and use at the same time. It's really, really important. So I'm going to keep the inverter off and uh, just let this charge for, like I said, about an hour or so. We'll come back and check on it. And if we can get it up to about 30% or so, we'll, we'll do some more testing. Well, the second day has started off well. We've had pretty good sun. Or you saw where I went out early this morning around 11 o'clock and set up the two portable 200-watt panels. And they've been doing pretty good. They've been doing about 220 to 240 watts. Um, it's now almost 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so we've had, what, roughly three hours of charging. 
And uh, I think what we'll do now, that should be enough for us to kind of continue some testing. And one of the things I want to do is kind of turn the refrigerator on and just see if winter solar on just a couple hundred amps of panels can kind of just keep up with just some of the general use. So I've done that with some others uh, in the past. And of course, if it was a bright summer day, June, July, August, you know, big bright sun, no clouds, we'd probably be topping out those panels probably in the 350, 375. I may even get close to 400, but we're not going to do that in the winter. So, let's see, 2 o'clock. Uh, let's run out and just kind of check the unit. I'm, I'm kind of going back and forth just to show you how the app works and what the front of the unit looks like. So let's go down there and look at that. It's down in the bay. And we'll come back, run the microwave. I think I'll turn the refrigerator back on. We'll just kind of see how things are going to work. Okay, three hours of solar. Let's see how we're looking. See if the GoPro here will pick it up. I think so. It looks pretty good. We're at... 38 percent so that was from about i don't know it started off at three percent this morning and then by the time i videoed it i think i was at seven and um you know i've got i was out here just a few minutes ago we were about two and a quarter 230 watts uh, we've got a little bit of wispy clouds starting to come in so i'm going to be impacted a little bit so uh, we're at 170 so this is going to kind of flop around today because of the clouds. All right, let's go inside and do some testing. So I'm going to get my favorite lunch stop meal. <laughs> Bear with me. So these are those um, state fair corn dogs. I love these things. Um, we buy them, you know, we buy them at the uh, discount place. So the nice thing about it is, is we can, you know, just stick them into the microwave. Uh, real quick and um, they're better if I do them in an air fryer but if we uh, if we're just stopping you know just for a short period of time there we go short period of time we let that run and that kind of cooks our meal so let's go out here and check and just see what the power looks like on this unit now I guarantee you we'll be pulling some now well it has spun up as you can tell um, I guarantee you we'll not be replacing what we are burning <laughs> Uh, this is, let's see, 38% we're drawing, almost 18, right at 1,800 watts with 214 coming in. Of course, this is going to be short period. All right, this should just be finishing up. Shouldn't be even another second. There we go. I love these things. They are awesome. They're hot, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> my head is really hot. So that's typically what we would do. I, you know, I would run this, I would fix something. Uh, Joan likes those um, Lean Cuisines and those style steamer bowls and so forth. So we'd have us a nice hot meal. Stop at the rest stop for a little while. We've got internet running, so we pull out our iPads or if I have to do just a little bit of business while I'm on the road, I can stop for a few minutes, call some clients, do whatever needs to be done. So, you know, that's really nice as well. And um, the refrigerator continues to run. So what's happened now that I've plugged into the Opus, I'm no longer pulling from my uh, inverter through my lithium. So that's going to stop the drain on that while we travel. It's not a big deal. I've got plenty of lithium, but that's just the way it works. As soon as it sees shore power, the internet or the um, inverter stops working. But in, in internet continues to work as long as I've got power coming in here. So. We can have us a nice little 20, 30 minute break and back off on the road again. So that's what would typically happen on like a seven or eight hour tow. We've got one coming up in a couple weeks. Well, it's 4.30 in the afternoon. We've been running about five and a half hours today. Really wanted to see what solar production was going to do and then run a few other appliances and see how things are going to behave. So let's pull up the app real quick and just see where we're at. As expected, input from solar is at uh, 24 watts. And uh, you can see it's almost 4.30 uh, if you look at the little red dot up in the top left-hand side. It's, it's hitting down behind the trees. I'm not going to get much more. Uh, but here's, here's the interesting thing. Uh, is if you look on the right-hand side here, I still have 35% left. So literally, we have been floating between 35 and 37% usage all day. So I'm... <laughs> I'm kind of pleased that the uh, panels have been able to keep up with things. Okay. Well, I shut everything down, and I, I'm happy. I'm happy with the, what we saw from our performance today with a moderate amount of solar panels, 400 watts of solar panels. 
only producing probably an average of about 225, 230 throughout the day. We had some lows, we had some highs. Winter sun, it's partly cloudy. It still performed well. It still performed very, very well. From the standpoint, I was able to quickly boost it up to about 36, 37%. And that's where we stayed all day long, running a residential refrigerator, running my cradle point internet. Um, it's perfect. If I could have added a little bit more solar to this, then not only would we have been able to put back in what we took out, we could have charged the system up uh, relatively easy. So and I think that's where it's gonna really benefit. If I was to put some fixed solar on top of the roof just to be able to keep this capped off, I think this would be an excellent, excellent device and a boondocking environment where air conditioning isn't needed. I just don't have enough capacity in this to run air. I think a device like this, again, if you don't need air conditioning, a device such as this, giving you that additional ability to be able to add additional capacity to it, relatively inexpensive, and then with solar, gives you quite a robust device to meet all of your 120 volt AC type appliances and so forth. So again, I'm very, very pleased with the performance of this. And then using the Bluetooth app, you've got the ability to be able to monitor using Bluetooth or being able to use the screen that are on these systems. So again, overall, I'm very, very happy with the Mega 2. We've looked at two others before, the 1100 and the 1800, but this one with the 30 amp connection and then the expandable capability, I'm very, very pleased. Well, I hope I hope later on this year I'm able to obtain one of the additional batteries that goes with this and then we'll put this through even some more extensive testing and I may even try to fire off uh, an air conditioner now that I would have say over 4,000 kilowatt hours and just seeing how something like that would perform. So I'll get with Opus and see if we can't work that out later on this year. But overall I'm very pleased with the Mega 2. It is going to be our standby system. I think that we're going to use for the next several months. Um, we've got a lot of travel planned uh, for the rest of the year. We're going to be going quite a bit and I'm sure we're going to have plenty of opportunity to be able to use this both in a, I'll call it just a backup need when we don't want to run our a gasoline generator. So very, very pleased with this. Well, thank you Opus for being able to provide us with the Mega 2. They, they've always uh, given us very fine quality products to look at. If you would like to consider buying a, a Mega 2 or one of the other families of Opus products, I'm going to be providing a link in today's description and then a code that you can use uh, for your specific needs. And if you want more details about this, go out to ilovervlife.com and there is a blog today and I'll be giving you, you'll see the video there as well, but I have spec sheets and some other detailed information that you may be interested in concerning this and the add-on products that you can acquire from Opus for these Mega 2s as well. Well, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you found today's video helpful. I know it was long. I know there was a lot of pieces and parts to it. I thank you for sticking with it to the end. And if you'd like to see more uh, items like this, just you know, give me an idea of what you'd like to hear from. Uh, we're going to be mixing this up with some travel later on this year um, as we start hitting the road again. And uh, I really thank you for watching. And you know why I do this. I do this for one specific reason. And it's just because I love RV life. Mm -hmm.